A thought is hard to fathom in the presence of my King, and with countless ones forgiven, gathered round the throne to sing glory and honor. Worthy is the Lamb.
Good morning. Welcome to our worship here at the Chula Vista Church of Christ. We'd like to wish you a happy new year. And what better way to begin the new year than worshiping the one true God? Let's begin with our worship this morning, our first song, A New Anointing. This is the season for a new anointing. This is the season for a fresh outpouring. Let the sons and daughters of the King of glory may arise and shine. Let the sons and daughters of the King of glory may arise and shine as we declare. This is the day, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. In the beginning God created, and for His pleasure all creation sings. Every son and daughter of the King of glory now arise and shine. Every son and daughter of the King of glory now arise and shine as we declare. This is the day, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let your glory fill the earth. Let your glory fill the earth. Let your glory fill the earth. Let your glory fill the earth as we declare. This is the day, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. King of Let's continue in song this morning. Our next song is Step by Step. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways. And step by step you'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways. And step by step you'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. And I will follow you all of my days. And I will follow you all of my days. And step by step you'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. Let's continue in worship with a word of prayer. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this new year. Father, we view these new years as they come as, as opportunities to, to, change thing about our, to change things about our lives, to become more of what we want to be. And Father, we pray that for each one present this morning that our deepest desire is to be more like your son, Jesus. Father, to live lives that, that please you, that share your love with those around us. Father, we pray that you'll be with us as we continue in worship this morning, that you'll bless all that happens today, the songs that we sing, the words that we speak, the prayers we offer, the Lord's Supper that we share. We pray that you will bless these things and that they come up to you as an acceptable sacrifice of praise. Father, again, we are so grateful that we are able to be together this morning, though not physically, in spirit, Father, we pray for your healing on those who are impacted by this COVID virus. Father, we pray that you would just bring rapid healing so that we can come back together like we always have to be with one another, to love one another. Father, we have no greater desire than that and to serve you. We pray all this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's sing this next song to prepare our hearts and minds for partaking of the Lord's Supper. Your only Son no sin to hide, but you have sent him from your side to walk upon this guilty side and to be
Good morning. I'll be reading from 1 Corinthians. Chapter 11, starting in verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he gave it thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat the bread and drink the cup. For he who eats and drinks, eats and drinks judgment to himself, if he does not judge the body rightly. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, thank you so much for this opportunity to, to be with you, to be with our family. Father, we just praise you and thank you, Father. Father, we thank you for the gift that you gave in your son's sacrifice so that we can be with you in heaven and that your spirit can dwell with us right now. Father, we ask that you bless this bread, which represents the body of your Son, which hung on a cross for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's continue our prayer. Heavenly Father, once again, we approach your throne of grace and mercy and love, Father. And we praise you and we thank you for the love which sent your Son to us, Father. Father, we thank you for the shed blood which cleanses us and makes us pure and holy for all time in your sight. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This traditionally concludes the Lord's Supper that our services have. Uh, at this time, though, normally if we were in church in service, we would uh, offer a uh, an offering. We would we would uh, offer a collection. And uh, since we can't do that, uh, if we uh, if you would like to uh, give to the church to support um, our many ministries, uh, you can do that through tithely, or you can send a check or money order to the church itself. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we just thank you and praise you for all the many blessings we enjoy, Father. Uh, the blessings that we see, the blessings that we don't, Father. Father, I pray a special blessing on, on this next new year, Father. Father, help us to focus more on you. Uh, Father, I pray that you give us discernment uh, to see through the lies the world tries to tell us, Father. Father, we just thank you and praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's sing this song before our lesson, Hope of the Nations. Jesus, hope of the nations, Jesus, comfort for all who mourn. You are the source of heaven's hope on earth. Jesus, light in the darkness, Jesus, truth in each circumstance. You are the source of heaven's light on earth. In history you lived and died, you broke the chains, you rose to life. You are the hope living in us, you are the rock in whom we trust, you are the light shining for all the world to see. From the dead, conquering fear, our prince of peace, drawing us near. Jesus, our hope, living for all who will receive.
excited about the new year, mainly because 2020, it, I don't know about you, but it's not really been my year. It probably hasn't been your year. It hasn't really been anyone's year. And so we're all looking forward to this, this new year. But I think this year, probably more so than any other year, we aren't quite as excited about 2021 as we were about 2020 when it was still 2019, right? Because we always think that at a new beginning, things are going to be fantastic, right? That's what we always think. It's what we always hope for. We make all these plans. We have, I'm going to lose weight. I don't know about you, but I, I haven't contracted COVID-19, but I feel like I kind of got the COVID-19, if you know what I'm saying. We always have all these plans, but the plans tend to, tend to fall apart, especially in a year like this one, where there's a lot more serious things to think about than how much do you weigh or did you achieve that, that diet goal or that financial goal? We have a lot of serious things going on, and 2020 is, has been a very tragic and sad year in a lot of different ways, in a lot, a lot of different ways. And so we look with anticipation toward 2021, but we're also hit with a very deep sense of reality, which is that things may not go as we want, which led me to make this post on social media, which says, I am so excited about 2021, so many plans, nothing is going to stop me, right? We all know that, that that's kind of not true. Something might stop us. Something might get in the way. And if we're paying attention to the biblical story, what we might find is that more often than not, we get in our own way. We are our own worst enemy. And we're the ones that continue to fail. So I thought, what better to talk about on a New Year's sermon than failure? Because if there's anything we're all really good at, it's failing. We all seem to do it very, very well. I believe very deeply, actually, that we're all failures and to some degree to some extent and when we look through the biblical story what we find is the bible has a lot of failings in it we have the story of adam and eve and when you think about the story it couldn't get any more perfect for them the setup is perfect you've got a world that is perfectly organized perfectly coordinated has everything that they'll need to succeed and yet they find themselves hiding from God because the one rule they gave were given by God, they weren't able to obey that rule and they failed. They had not a new beginning, they had the beginning. And yet they failed. We've got the story of Noah and the flood, right? Could it get any more perfect? Eh, sort of, right? <laughs> The entire world population has been wiped down except for Noah and seven of his family members. And they come back and Noah makes a sacrifice to God. The aroma is pleasing to God. And then God looks at Noah and his family and says, man is sinful from youth. Man is rebellious and sinful from youth. I thought the flood was supposed to solve all the problems of human iniquity and human failing. The flood story is this great story of the recreation of the world. And yet, 
even with this new beginning. It's followed by a new failure. We see the story of, in the book of Leviticus with Nadab and Abihu, which if you're part of my Sunday morning class at 9, if you're not, you can always join in the class. We do it on Google Duo. It's a video class. It's pretty neat. Um, let me know if you're interested. <clears throat> we'll add you into the, to the Google Duo class list, and you can join us on Sunday mornings. But we just got done studying the uh, story of Nadab and Abihu in Leviticus chapter 10. And it's kind of a very similar theme we saw with Adam and Eve and with Noah and with other stories in the Old and New Testament. The perfect setup and then the perfect failure. These priests have been, had been dignified or had been consecrated and sanctified. They'd been selected by God to perform these sacrifices, to do the rituals. And yet, after all the purification processes and after building the first tabernacle they'd ever had and doing these for the very first time, things go wrong. And it goes over even to the New Testament with Ananias and Sapphira. Everything's perfect. The Holy Spirit has been poured out upon, upon God's people. People are freely giving and sending their properties and giving their money so that the poor can, can live and prosper. And yet, they fail. They, they lie about what they have done. And they fail. You see, the Bible is full of failure. The Bible is full of failure, and I've just done a brief skimming of the Bible. Time and time again, we see the story of how God has set up his people for success, and they fail. The question that we have dealing with this morning, because we're still in the Gospel of Matthew, is will Jesus fail? Now, I know all of us are good Christians, and we, we already know the answer to this question, right? We know that Jesus does not fail. But I want us to imagine, just picture for a moment, that we don't know who Jesus is. We've picked up the book of Matthew for the first time. We're very familiar with the Old Testament stories, but we haven't heard the story of Jesus yet. Think about this story. Jesus has been declared the Son of God, just as Israel had been declared the Son of God. Jesus has had that experience. We have the story of, of Mary and Joseph. We have the story of Herod trying to kill Jesus the way that Pharaoh had tried to kill the Israelite boys. Jesus escapes just as Moses had escaped. Jesus has now gone through his baptism just as the nation of Israel had been baptized in the Red Sea. Jesus is also baptized in the River Jordan. Everything is set up for Jesus to succeed the same way everything was set up for Adam and Eve to succeed. Everything was set up for Noah to succeed. Everything was set up for Moses to succeed and the nation of Israel to succeed. Everything was set up for Nadab and Abihu to succeed. You get the idea. So if you're reading the story for the first time and you're familiar with, this, with the ancient Jewish stories that they had grown up with, the question you have to be asking yourself is will this new Moses, will this Jesus, will he fail like everyone else? Because I said at the beginning, we are all very good at failing. Happy New Year. We're all very good at failing. Will Jesus fail? And perhaps there's no greater story of consistent failure than the story of Israel in the wilderness. As time and time again, they rebel against God and they test God at the waters and they, they continually test God with their grumbling and their complaining and their lack of trust. Will Jesus succeed where man has failed? Matthew chapter 4. I've just given a brief summary of leading up to chapter 4. If you're paying attention, we actually skipped all of chapter 3 because most of chapter 3 we have in Mark. And this is the Missing Messages of Mark sermon series after all. So we're back to Matthew chapter 4, Jesus' temptation or testing in the wilderness. It says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. This, this first verse should give us a little bit of something to think about. We might not find an immediate application in our lives, but it's something to keep in mind. It is the Spirit of God that led Jesus to be tempted or tested by the devil. 
So many times in our lives we feel like the testing that we're going through, the, the hardship that we're going through, if there's the suffering that we're going through, we feel like God has abandoned us. But the story of Jesus is the story of God with us. And even in a time of sorrow and pain, the Spirit of God is leading. So Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry, which makes a lot of sense. I've, I don't think I've ever fasted more than maybe a day, and I was starving. 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. That's, that's an understatement. It says the tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, Tell these stones to become bread. Now remember what had just happened to Jesus. Jesus, right before this, had been baptized. And he'd seen the heavens open. And he'd heard the voice of God say, You are my son. Now Jesus is being tested. Do you actually believe you are my son? And what does it mean to be a son of God. Satan says, or the devil says to him, if you are the son of God, as you claim to be, as that voice told you that you are, tell these stones to become bread. You're hungry right now. Just solve your problems. Solve them like that. Super easy. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Every scriptural reference that Jesus gives is from Deuteronomy 6 through 8. Every single one. And the way Deuteronomy 6 starts is with the Shema, is with that ancient Jewish prayer of the Lord our God, the Lord is one. He says, we live by the word of this God, this one God, this God who we trust with our lives. Being a child of God does not mean I go around making my life easier. It means that I trust God even when there's no food around. I trust God and I live on every word that proceeds from God's mouth. It says, then the devil <clears throat> took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. No one really knows exactly where that point is, but Jesus is apparently up on the temple, either as a vision or in reality. And the devil says again, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You see, Satan or the devil is quoting scripture. Now, some people say, well, he's quoting scripture, but out of context. No, he's quoting scripture in context. Verse seven says, Jesus answered him, it is also written. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. You see, the devil's continually trying to place doubt in the mind of Jesus and in the heart of Jesus as to who he really is. Because when he doubts who he is, that is when he fails and that is when he takes things and does things the way that the world would do things, not the way that God would do things. And so he approaches him with a scripture. But Jesus replies with another scripture. There's, there, this is a side lesson, but it's an important lesson. You cannot just take one verse and say that this is the only verse that applies in this or that situation. It's not meant to be lived that way. And scripture is not meant to be read that way, Satan comes to Jesus with a scripture. Jesus replies with another scripture, a counter scripture, a counter voice. And in fact, this is what Jesus goes through throughout his ministry. With the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Zealots and everyone coming at him with these different concepts from scripture. But Jesus replying with other concepts from scripture, 
regarding Sabbath, regarding clean and unclean foods, regarding clean and unclean people. You cannot just stick with one verse. You have to consider all of it together and then apply wisdom if you're going to live as a son of God. He says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. This is exactly what Israel had done while they were in the wilderness for 40 years. Jesus is now in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. And so far he's doing really well at passing the test or the the temptation from the devil. It says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. If you trust God, you do not need to test God. To live as a child of God means you live trusting God. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. A lot of talk has been about, well, which mountain? Well, there is no mountain in Israel where you can see every kingdom of the world. In fact, there's, there's no mountain anywhere in the entire earth where you can see every kingdom of the world. So perhaps this is all a vision or an experience that Jesus is having. Either way, Jesus sees all the things that could be his and in fact as Messiah, Son of God, will be his. All this I will give you Satan said, if you bow down and worship me. Now, right now in our culture, in our society, where we're at right now in America, I have a fear. Maybe it's unsubstantiated. Maybe it's not. But I have this fear. I have this this thing that I believe that I'm seeing and I hope I'm not. Where the church is forfeiting what it means to be a son of God in favor of gaining power over the world in a way that's not meant for us. Another way to say it is, I believe the church has become power hungry. And perhaps the church is now going through a temptation or a testing of our own. And Satan is telling us, If you'll do this, if you'll do that, I will give you all of this. All of this can be yours. And of course, we know how Jesus answered. It says, Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And scripture tells us that Satan went away and angels came and they they ministered. To Jesus. You see, if there's anything we've learned about ourselves in the year of 2020 is that we fail. If there's anything we learn from reading scripture, it's that we fail. Us as individuals, us as groups of people, us as a human race, we fail time and time and time again. And the story of Jesus in the temptation in the wilderness is a story of where Jesus succeeds, where we fail. Jesus succeeds where all of us were incapable of succeeding. You see, most of us think about that truth and we think about it in the story of the cross, the death, burial, and resurrection. But we already see the story happening here. In the temptation in the desert. Jesus succeed where man has failed. And let me say something, that is good news. That is good news because as people, we will continue to fail. We don't want to. We're not trying to fail. We're trying not to fail. We want a fresh start. We want a new beginning. And those are all great But we need to realize that Jesus is the one who lived the success so that we can live with our failure. And we can rely on his mercy and his grace and his love and and his actions and his success so that we can proclaim it's not because of me. 
It's not because of good works that I have done. It's because Jesus has succeeded where I have failed. And if you're listening to this message this morning and you've not given your life to God, you have not become a Christian, let me leave this information with you. You will never be perfect by your own means. Even once you give your life to God, you will still never be perfect by your own means, but you can rest on knowing that Jesus is the new Moses. Jesus is the new Israel. Jesus is the new man who has done things in a way that we cannot. And that Jesus has succeeded where we have failed. And as Christians, we don't, we don't claim perfection. We don't claim that we've gone through the wilderness and we've lived it perfectly. No, no, we haven't. But what we do is we say that we follow the one who went through that wilderness, who went through that suffering and through that pain as God with us. But he came out the other side having completed what we have failed. And we love Jesus, and we rely on Jesus, and we worship Jesus and the God that we all serve. We worship and we love and we adore, and that, that worship and adoration spills over into our hearts and offers love for the people around us. Because we know we're not perfect. But because of Jesus, we can live a completed life that he completed for us. Because where you have failed and where I have failed, Jesus has succeeded. And God is with us. The church says, Amen. Thank you, Rob, for that lesson. Let's close our worship this morning with a final song followed by a closing prayer. Our final song this morning is Mighty to Save. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. So take me as you find me. All my fears and failures Fill my life again I give my life to follow Everything I believe in Now I surrender Savior, He can move the mountains my God is mighty to save, He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Save.
Savior, you can move the mountains. Lord, you are mighty to save. You are mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, you rose and conquered the grave. Yes, you conquered the grave. Amen. Thank you so much for being here with us today. We pray that you have a blessed Sunday and a blessed week, and we'll see you next week. Will you bow with me in closing prayer? Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day and this wonderful time we get to be with you. Thank you for everything we have, family, friends, food. Thank you for 2020 for being over. And please help the ones that need to be helped and heal the ones that are sick. And in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.